second story. Okay. Uh, this coming to us, two Utes. What's a Ute? Uh, Forbes.com with record real estate prices. Uh, now is a, is now a good time to sell your home. This coming to us from a lovely man by the name of Noah Kirsch, who handles real estate for Forbes. Things are coming to a boil in the market for U.S. homes, and it may be the right time to sell. In October, prices for homes across the U.S. registered the fifth largest monthly gain since 1996 and the strongest in 15 years. The heat is coming from the mix of factors, including limited inventory, suburban migration, and rock-bottom interest rates. That's what David just said, if you were paying attention. According to a recent report from the Federal Housing Administration, uh, U.S. home prices rose 7.8% in 12 months, ending in September 30th, the fastest climb in more than a decade. The typical U.S. home appreciated by 1% in October alone to $262,604, the best monthly gain since the fall of 2005. Um, leading the way on the known coastal states out of the West, Idaho jumped into uh, jumped the most, actually, with a year-over-year -year increase of 14.4%. The surge was fueled by Boise. Of course it was. It's a beautiful city, where the values have surged for decades as the city offers amenities. Uh, with all of that said, David, uh, are you shocked that nationally numbers are all holding up and everything is uh, looking sunny and rosy for the real estate market as we just talked about previously. Um, I'm really not, I'm really not that surprised. I mean, I'm surprised at how much it's up, but I'm not surprised that it's active and people, you know, when you have these low interest rates and you have extra time and you have, you, you have some stability and the, you know, in the marketplace with this low inventory, it doesn't, it doesn't surprise me at all. I think that you're going to see this pattern um, continue. Now, I'm, you know, admittedly not an expert, you know, in what's happening outside of Southern California. Um, but I can tell you that in talking to agents from all over the country, um, they seem to be reporting the same conditions that we're having, except their average home price is much lower than ours. Um, yeah. But aside from that, their their market sound exactly like ours in terms of supply and demand yeah. and multiple offers and limited inventory and high buyer demand, you know? So people are out there. And maybe it's just because they have extra time now. You, you know, there's a, they've, you know, because they're, you know, I don't think anybody's as productive as home as they would be in, in an office place. And so maybe 20% of the time, instead of working, they're looking on Zillow for a house. I don't know what's happening, but there's a lot of people looking for properties when they ought to be working. <laughs> so yeah, well, it's it. something to do, you know. It's, uh, I agree. Uh, it seems to be a pastime of, uh, one of the stories that I was kind of proofing for this story brought up Zillow, and I was thinking to myself, Yes, because they're always so accurate with pricing. Um, I think Zillow's created an opportunity for people to understand at least the value of their real estate uh, and the adaptation to the market of digital, having a digital influence uh, where they can go almost it, literally at any point, you can go and get the value of a house. You can make a phone call, find out the value of what your neighbor sold their house for. These are it's all public data, and now we live in an age of technology for most, not everybody's technologically savvy, but most, uh, where you can go and get this data and it makes you more savvy. It's your, at the end of the day, it's your biggest investment uh, period. And, and people are starting to treat it that way. And the numbers seem to dictate it. I mean, there is, this is the old banker in me. I know that people believe that there's security in owning a home and having a home um, as a commodity, as a as a piece of, you know, as a piece of tangible something that they can hold on to. I still live in a world where I believe that it's not real. I don't. I'm not even sure gold is real at this point, David. I've seen so many markets go up and go down throughout time where it's worth everything and then it's worth nothing. Uh, real estate historically has always managed to pull itself back up by its bootstraps, uh, but it inevitably crashes. And, and when you're talking about right time to sell, I, I, it, it's cliche, but 
is now the right time to sell? Well, I'm getting that, asked that question. The fact that, uh, you know, I was away and my neighbor was picking up our mail and I went over to get it yesterday and she's been talking about moving, you know, further south. And she asked me, well, I think that I'm ready to sell and, you know, but should I do it now or should I wait till after the first of the year? So that was the premise of the question. And so here's my answer. My answer was, well, you know, I think that if it's, a, you know, the good time to sell is when when no one else is selling because it's a right. very limited inventory. I said there's a I can make a very strong case that now is exactly the right time to sell because there are a lot of people having conversations with their realtor, just like you and I are having, where they're planning to come on the market the first of the year. Well, if if there are, are tens of thousands of like-minded people, then those people represent competition. Meanwhile, in talking to at least my buyer agents, you know, they're still reporting very active buyers and they're still reporting multiple offers on properties they're trying to secure for their buyers and we're still seeing multiple offers on our listings okay and so that makes now a very good time do you want to be a big fish in a smaller pond or a small fish in a bigger pond so the worst thing that will happen is you get on the market right now and you don't sell but the next great time to be on the market is not next year the next great time to be on the market is december 25th and the reason that you would want to go on the market on December 25th is that Zillow has reported in the past that the week between Christmas and New Year's is the busiest week for online traffic on their yeah. site. It is. It's, you know, we talk about this every single year. This seems to this is you know this seems to remain true. And so there's not a lot of buyer act, there's not a lot of transactions you know being done there but you're seeing a lot of buyer activity and then the action really, really um, heats up after the first of the year as buyers and sellers shake the holidays and say, okay, now the first of the year is over, now we get going and then it builds and builds and builds until March or April. Now, because we don't know what's gonna happen with COVID and politics and you know climate change or all the things that people are thinking about lately, um, you know, I, I try to encourage people to focus on what we know versus what we think we know or what we hope will happen. And so right now, today, it would be a very good time to get on the market and list your house where you really take advantage of high demand and low inventory. In Jan and then, and then in, if you're not ready to go on the market now, at least get your photos taken now so that you don't have Christmas decorations in your photos and then go online on December 25th so that you can take advantage of that onslaught of traffic that we're anticipated and anticipating. And it won't look like an age listing if you list it with in January, if you haven't sold it, it doesn't look like an age listing because it's got a lot of um, Christmas decorations there. Right. And then otherwise then you go on and see what we don't know is we don't know we know a lot of listings are going to come on online in January, but we don't know whether or not there's going to be enough buyers to support it. And so we don't know what the supply and demand um, matrix is going to be. We don't know, you know, whether or not there's going to be an imbalance. It's going to get worse for buyers or and better for sellers or worse for sellers and better for buyers. It really just depends on how things flush out. But it seems to be it's going to be a very hot, very competitive um, marketplace. And then you've got the stuff coming up in March and April where you've got these forbearances that are coming to an end because that's when those forbearances started from COVID. And those people who still aren't in a position to, um, to resume making their mortgage payments are going to be forced to sell versus foreclosure. That's going to add more inventory into the market. And again, we don't know if buyer demand is going to be strong enough um, in order to absorb that extra inventory. So we're gonna have the pent up the seller demand that we already have with people waiting till the first of the year to go on the market. And then you're gonna have another wave of people who don't want to sell, but have to, because they they need to harvest the equity out of their house in order to um, survive. They're gonna wanna downsize or just get their cash out of the walls of the house and sit on it. So those two factors um, really make now as good a time as any to get your house on the market 
that's not to say that waiting until January is is going to be worse. It just means we know now would be great and everything else we don't really know. Moving on to our featured story. Oh, uh, pro tip, by the way. Wait, let me throw in a pro tip right there before I move forward. Right. Pro tip to everybody. What David is talking about is absolutely correct. If you're launching new content, branding yourself, or starting yourself out for a brand new year of marketing, whatever your business type is, especially real estate professionals, which is what this show is generally geared towards. But hey, you could be a regular person with your own regular business. If you are getting ready to start jumping into the digital world, start now, be ready for the 25th. Good time to launch podcasts, good time to launch video pages, good time to launch the blog. Pro tip. Glad I could do that for you. Moving on to our featured story, you guessed it, how the Joe Biden presidency, <laughs> and, presidency. I, and I and I was on the radio, David. I, I had a radio show, listeners, I had a share, I had a share of the market, David, uh, how the Biden presidency will affect real estate. Here we go. This comes to us from businessinsider.com. Uh, it was written by Natasha Solo Lyons. I just like her name. I don't know if Solo is the original name and Lyons is who she married, but here's the whole name, Natasha Solo dash Lyons and Libertarian Brandt. Are those two people or is it all one person? I don't know, but I just like it. Joe Biden has been elected the 46th president of the United States. And as he approaches taking office on January 20th, 20th his policy proposal looms. His housing plan suggests big changes lie ahead for the real estate industry. Biden's stated goals, which include implementing a $15,000 tax credit for first-time homebuyers and closing the racial wealth gap uh, in housing. So let's stop right there, David, and let's talk about this. What does a $15,000 tax credit for first-time homebuyers mean? I don't know where I lost you, but the $15,000 credit is basically a right. credit against taxes that are due. It's not a, I made $100,000, so I get a credit of 15,000, so my taxable income is just 85,000. It's better than that. It's if you owe $20,000 and you get this credit, now you only owe $5,000. So it's it's really a, it's money in your pocket, basically. It, it repays you $15,000 in taxes that you would have paid. And it's really hard not to pay $15,000 in taxes with uh, the tax rates that we have. Well, what I'm interested by that is, so we're generating more buyers by this. We're giving people, it doesn't do anything. Oh, it's to trying to bring effect. a lot more buyers into the marketplace for sure. That seems counterproductive, but it'll drive prices up. Uh, let's see, the article goes on well, to say- they wanna make, They're trying to tackle this thing we were talking earlier is affordability. They're right. less concerned about the people who are making Four hundred thousand dollars a year than they are about the people making fifty thousand dollars a year. Right. That's that's what they're trying, to, you know, to do. I mean, I don't know if it's on your list there, but they're also talking about taking away the ten thirty one exchange. So again, yes. so you know, if you're taking away the ten thirty one exchange, apparently it applies only to you can't do a ten thirty one exchange if you make more than four hundred thousand dollars in a year. Then you know, again, they're they're moving some of those tax advantages from from people who are making four hundred thousand dollars a year or more, and they're moving them down to people who have lower income, which is one of the ways they would pay for this fifteen thousand dollar credit. They want more. They they want to help more people buy a you know buy a home, um, and they don't really want to help the rich get richer via real estate. Even though I can tell you that four hundred thousand dollars a year is not enough to make you feel rich. <laughs> yes, yeah. so, I can tell I can you. Say, that. <laughs> I can tell you that as well. 